Hello Ray class, welcome to the Path of Exile build guide for the Mega Budget Explosive Trapper. I apologize that it's been a real long time since I've put any guides out, and I apologize for the potential noise in the background, hits the middle of winter so heat is on. Although this character was not my first character in Metamorph League, it is the first guide I'm getting around to putting out. Basically, I had the idea while I was playing on some other characters that I wanted to try and see what I could do to clear the game on as small of a budget as possible. And so, I decided to set some rules for myself, I decided that I wanted an average gear cost of no more than 5 chaos per piece, and I would give myself an allowance of a 5 link that was not included in that cost, because anybody, once you've got the gear, for less than 5 chaos can farm for a few hours on a 4 link and get themselves 14 chaos for a jeweler's touch. After looking around at the options, I decided to go with Explosive Trap. I think along with Pyroclast Mine, it has some of the highest single target damage potential in the game, especially if you're on a tight budget. As usual, you can find a Path of Building link and any other useful links in the video description. So with that said, we'll get right into it and start by talking about the unique items that you want for this character. We will start by talking about the two unique items that sort of serve as the core of this build and are definitely mandatory, the first of which is a Tinker Skin. Tinker Skin can be got for 1 Chaos. I got a one with a perfect life roll for 1 Chaos. In fact, it's a super cheap item that not a whole lot of people use. This gives us really good life and energy shield sustain, which is excellent because we go hybrid on this character to get a decent life pool on a tiny budget. And it also gives us phasing when our traps trigger, which is pretty useful when you're trying to clear quickly and run through patches before your next set of traps explode. Next up is the Slave Driver's Hand. Now you may be wondering how this is a budget item. If you go on PoE Trade, you'll see that at the time of recording this, they were around 60 chaos each. However, the Architect's Hand and the Vial that you use to create the Slave Driver's Hand are both 1 chaos or less each. So go ahead and pick yourself up the components, and it is not that difficult to farm a couple Temple Rounds until you get a Tier 3 Sacrifice Chamber to make the Slave Driver's Hand. Also, if you've got some friends, you can post up a status message saying you're looking for a Tier 3 Sacrifice Chamber, and it probably won't take you that long to get one. Next up, we have some jewels. As you'll see in a few minutes, this character takes a total of 6 jewel slots on the tree. We use one of those with a Hair Trigger Viridian Jewel. This jewel gives us a large bonus to trap trigger area of effect, which when combined with the rest of the nodes on the tree, we get enough to make it so that every time we throw a cluster trap on a target, we are guaranteed to have all three of those traps explode on the target, which gives us really excellent sustain through Tinker Skin. Next up, we use a super underused jewel, which can be got for like one Alka piece. Uh, go ahead and go for perfect rolls, they'll still be mega cheap, that is unstable payload. This jewel gives us a chance for our traps to trigger an additional time, with 5 of these rolled at 12%, that's a 60% chance for traps to trigger an additional time. And when you combine it with the Sabo node that gives 20%, that gives us 80% traps to trigger an additional time, which is essentially 80% more damage. So it is an excellent way of boosting your damage up really high on a tiny budget. Next up, we use a Series Promise Flask. This flask is super good on pretty much any conversion build, and we are a full conversion build from physical. This gives us a lot of extra chaos damage, so it's just, again, a really good option for a cheap damage boost. I paid two chaos for one with pretty good rolls. Next up is a Wise Oak. Wise Oak is not mega mega cheap, but we did save a bunch of money on most of our other pieces being only one or two chaos, so I was able to spend seven chaos for a cheapo Wise Oak. A better rolled one is more expensive, but I went as cheap as possible to stay within the budget. And you definitely want to try and balance your resists to get penetration on all three elements, which I managed to do on a budget while also getting excellent chaos resist. Now we will talk about the rare items and other slots that you want to fill out for this build. As this character is a hybrid character, one of our top priorities is to get as much life and energy shield as possible, and while you're looking around at different gear pieces, keep in mind that you want to get an explosive trap enchantment on your helmet with plus two extra explosions. Next, you want to make sure you cap your resistance, and you definitely want to get at least 60% chaos resistance to bring yourself up to zero so you're at least not taking amplified chaos damage. There are becoming increasingly more sources of dangerous chaos damage in the game, so I think at this point it is becoming quite important to try and fit at least some chaos resistance into all your builds. Beyond that, you want to get as many damage mods as possible. These could be crits, spell damage, or cast speed, and try to get a wand with plus one to a level of all fire gems. I got a pretty good one for like three chaos. I actually got it for free when I whispered the guy and offered three chaos. He just gave it to me, but I think it's worth about three chaos based on what else was on the market. 
for your flasks. We go back to our old tried and true catalyzed eternal life flask of staunching. And then you want a diamond flask with heat or warding depending on what you're running. Generally I keep in heat most of the time but I'll chuck in warding if I'm running a nasty curse map. And finally you want a quicksilver of adrenaline and of course your other two slots were filled out by the unique flasks we mentioned earlier. And as you can see, there is an additional paste bin link in the description of this video that has the exact cost of each of my items, which you can look at the items themselves and path of building, and you can see what you should be looking for at a given price point. Next, we will run through the different gem setups we are using this character. For your main setup in your 5 link tinker skin, you want Explosive Trap linked to Concentrated Effect, which gets swapped for increased AoE when you're clearing, Physical Lightning, Charge Traps, and Cluster Traps. Your other main setup is Bear Trap linked to Culling Strike, and we use Hatred and Zealotry for our auras. As far as utility goes, you want to use Flame Dash linked to Blood Magic for getting over terrain, Cast when Damage Taken linked to Temp Chains and Frost Bomb, Temporal Chains for Defense and Frost Bomb to apply Cold Exposure on enemies since we use Hatred. Next you want Storm Brand linked to Blood Magic, Curse on Hit, and Elemental Weakness. The reason we're linking these active gems to blood magic is because we reserve all of our mana with hatred and zealotry and the slave driver's hand makes it so our traps have blood magic so we don't need any mana. The curse on hit and elemental weakness will of course lower the enemy's resistances to all elements so make sure you use that rather than a single element curse. And finally we use cast one damage taken linked to wave of conviction and physical to lightning with arctic breath. We use Physical to Lightning to ensure that Wave of Conviction is hitting for mostly Lightning damage so that it applies Lightning exposure to enemies because with the Physical to Lightning gem in our main setup, that is our major source of damage. Arctic Breath we use to reliably chill enemies for extra defense. Now we will run through the passive tree that I put together for this character. This tree went through a number of tweaks and iterations to get to its final form and I think it is fairly optimal at this point. One important thing to note is that one of the main bonuses of Slave Driver's Hand is that it makes it so cast speed applies to trap throwing speed, so it is very beneficial to pick up extra cast speed where you can on the tree. We start by just heading out through the shadow area as usual. You could of course go the trap and mine damage here and the elemental, I just went with the elemental based on what I was doing early for leveling. You can pretty much level with explosive trap right from the beginning, I think that's what I did but I can't remember for sure. Head out through your crit nodes, grab all of your trap stuff along the way as quickly as possible. For example, right at the bat I actually grab these saboteur nodes and stuff. Grab whatever you can to boost your damage early on while leveling to make it so you can blast through that story quicker. Head up through life and energy shield and around to the doom cast wheel. Go ahead and grab blast cascade over here for your crit and extra power charge generation, though charge traps pretty much takes care of that for you. Head down and grab one power charge, a jewel slot, and the trap wheel. Grab frenzy charge. We're using charge traps and we get a total of 5 power charges and 5 frenzy charges which gives us a lot of trap throwing speed and crit multi so I think it's a really excellent support gem. Down here is the one 3 point jewel slot we get. The projectile damage is wasted but it was the only 3 pointer jewel slot left next to our tree. Head down for extra crit, another jewel slot, fervor, and herbalism. Then you're going to head over into the trap area here and make sure you pick up the Master Sapper and Unstable Munitions clusters. These are two of our biggest clusters in terms of trap trigger area of effect. Grab all the jewel slots you're next to, more life and energy shield as we head toward the wish area, and this nimbleness wheel is really excellent when you're using Slave Driver's Hand. Gives a combination of crit, cast speed, and movement speed and crit multi, so it's just kind of a jack of all trades wheel there that's really handy. A little more life and mana over here. The mana doesn't matter, but heart and soul is too good to pass up just on the life with a 5 and an 8 for 2 points. Grab some AoE, another power charge and jewel slot, and some life and resistance is over here with cool preparation. For our ascendancy, we are of course a saboteur. The nodes you want to aim for are Born in the Shadows, Pyromaniac, Perfect Crime, and Explosives Expert. You can get these in whatever order you want. I think while leveling I usually go Born in the Shadows first for that excellent defense. It really helps keep you alive through the campaign. And then Pyromaniac for the sustain. Your damage will carry itself for now so you can hold off on the damage ones till later. We do not want Chain Reaction because Chain Reaction Explosions do not work with Tinker Skin so they won't give you life and energy shield. And based on using a Hair Trigger and stacking Trap Trigger area of effect on the tree, all of our traps will blow up anyway so Chain Reaction is unnecessary. Explosives Expert is great because we are converting to Fire and Lightning and adding Cold through Hatred, so we are frequently burning, shocking, and chilling enemies, and our cast and damage taken setups ensure that even bosses are chilled, so we are always getting full effectiveness from Explosives Expert.
Finally, for your Pantheon choices on this character, I recommend using Soul of the Brine King to make it so you can't be chain stunned, and capturing the Soul of Glace upgrade to give yourself faster stun recovery. And then for our Minor God choice, we use Rislotha for the Flask Sustain, and make sure you grab the upgrade on that, which is Soul of Goreless Will Thief. That'll make it so your Flasks heal you a lot more when you are low on life, which will really boost you up with that catalyzed Eternal Life Flask of Staunching. Thank you all so much for watching this video. I will leave you with this Uber Elder fight here so that you can see that you can, in fact, clear the hardest content on the game on an extremely tiny budget. The final gear cost for this character was 49 Chaos in total if you do not count the Jeweler's Touch, which was 14 Chaos at the time that I bought it, so you can add that onto the cost if you don't want to spot yourself that 5 link. The build was really fun, I had a lot of fun just trying to push the idea of a mega budget character as far as possible and I think it turned out really well. Explosive Trap is super cool, um, I'm tempted to go back onto this character and grab a 6 link Tinker Skin, they're only like 2 exalts, and just see how much more the damage is, you get a lot more obviously with that final slot which I would probably put in Trap and Mine damage for. I hope this has shown you that you can have a lot of fun on a tiny budget in Path of Exile and accomplish all of your goals, and inspired you to go out and try and do something similar yourself to try and push a concept as far as you can. That's where the joy of Path of Exile is for me, is just pushing new ideas as far as I can, rather than sticking with the same old meta that everybody else seems to be following. Thank you for watching, there will be more videos coming soon hopefully, I've got a big backlog of build guides that I'll try to get out from this league and the previous league which I have a bunch of footage for. Stay safe out there, Exiles, and I hope to see you in Rayclast.